Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Get Connected with Julie and uh, Michael. We're here today to help inspire you and inform you and give you some great tips and ideas to help you really, you know, bring your program to where you want it to grow. So, hey, Michael, how's it going? Uh, everything is going well, going well. How about yourself? What's what's new in your world? Any any fun uh, meetings that you've had this week? I know we kind of talk a little offline about some things, but uh, before we bring our special guest on, I would love to we give our listeners maybe some some fun tips and things like that from sure yeah and, and i love when you and i just kind of chat about the things that we've been up to because we're working you know we're in the trenches working with owners and leaders helping them make transformations happen but i can't you know i have to just tease everybody a little bit because our special guest is going to share with you how to feel more comfortable on camera right we talked about media we talked about getting yourself in media She's going to talk to you about feeling more comfortable and projecting the image that you want to project. And I know this has been a challenge for many, many owners is how do you get your team to dress more professionally? And our guest Lee Hayward has some fantastic tips. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that segment. Absolutely. So what have I been up to? Well, you know, I don't know about you, but it seems like you know, some of the days get jam packed and that's like I've got a rest day where I just totally let myself, you know, recuperate. But Tuesday was one of those days where we started with our show at 9 a.m. And we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, um, broadcasting live to several different pages. But we started with that and I concluded at after 2 a.m. in the morning speaking to a fantastic group of owners and leaders in India oh, wow. um, about childcare, about enrollments, about and a lot about staff. And I think the thing that really is interesting to me, and I've always felt this way for like 20 years that I've been doing this, is that whether you're in Japan, whether you're in Finland, whether you're in India, the, the challenges that we face in this industry, and I don't know about you, Michael, but they are universal. And this is my observation, is that everybody's dealing with these different things, whether it's workplace gossip, drama, negativity, how do we get staff to be more motivated? So the presentation that I did to India was all about how do we get the right staff in and then how do we sustain motivation levels once they're in? Because one of the things that happens is that people are incredibly excited to come in and to work for you. And then it's like an hour later, a week later, two weeks later, a month later, it's like something happens and we think, who is this person that I hired? They're not the same person who I interviewed. <laughs> what happened? Right? Definitely had that before. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we want to look at the dynamic there and think to ourselves, well, what is it that happened? And is it that they changed or is it that we really didn't support them as good as we could have when they first came on and they were a new employee? So how do we sustain that enthusiasm for our vision that we're so excited to have this new person here to help us bring to life? And that's, like uh, that. yeah, that's a lot of the conversations we're about um, Tuesday. That's a long, long evening and a long day. Wow. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, why can't I get Yes, I was like, why can't I get out of bed? Why can't I get myself going? <laughs> yeah, so. that's, a, that's a late night. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's funny you should say the, the comment of kind of people showing up and then trying to learn what actually changed. So I, I had one of these conversations with my team members that things started off really strong. And I was asking myself a similar question, like, has something changed? Is it them? Is it me? Did they kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Trick me in the interview to, to kind of overselling their skills. We call it the imposter syndrome. <laughs> ah, I like it, the imposter <laughs> right? syndrome. Um, no, that, that's a, a same kind of conversation. And, and it was a really interesting conversation to say the least. And I realized, I think it was a little bit of everything, but yeah. uh, one of the phrases that I use that I encourage our, our listeners to, to use is, what can you do to make sure that you're making your team successful today? And often I get so pigeonholed in kind of what I'm doing for the day that I forget like how your jobs as, as leaders is to really make sure that your team is also succeeding and, and not just kind of having your head buried uh, in the weeds and then hoping that they just get everything sorted out. So yeah. Um, very yeah. Cool. And, and to me, one of the big strategies that I talked about, and, and you know, you've heard me talk about vision, you know, and I'll talk about vision till I'm, I'm blue in the face, but 
Um, but one of the strategies that I think we all have to do some self-evaluation around is how engaged are we with the vision? So when you think about your program, you think about all different aspects of it, how much does it excite you? And if you've checked out on any level when it comes to enthusiasm and the enthusiasm that you feel for your program or for your vision or for your people, and you're like, ugh, you know, it's, just, it's all okay, but it's not yet dreamy feeling for me. Sure. Then you've got to really do a self-evaluation and say, all right, well, how do I get back to this place of feeling really engaged? Because if you're not engaged, nobody else is going to be engaged. You know, we could fake it for a while. We could pull out that smile on a stick, or these days we could even wear a mask with a smile on it, right? Um, but it is masking the true emotion of what's going on behind the scene. And that's really what we want to project outward and find ways to really stay engaged with the vision. And that's always something that we're working on with our students. So it's a lot of mindset work that we're doing with our owners and our leaders in this industry, because if we check out, nobody else is going to be checked in, you know, and there are studies shown that say that like, you know, every single day on a regular day, over 60% of our workplace is actively disengaged. Wow. And if they're actively disengaged, then it means that we've got to be doing things purposefully to engage people every single day. And you got to start with yourself. And Lee's going to share this with us, too, when it comes to image. But you got to start with yourself and ask yourself, how engaged am I with the vision? And how engaged am I with that help wanted ad I just put out? How am I engaged am I with our new staff orientation process? Because if you're excited about getting people in, but then you feel negative about uh, your orientation process or anything else that new staff members have to filter through to become a value team member, you know, you're going to really turn down your power on attracting the right people to you. Love it. So that's what I've been up to this week. <laughs> Having I these like conversations. Like how about that. how about you? Um, so we're, I mean, we're focused on enrollment conversations. So I had a, a real good meeting with the center in Phoenix yesterday and uh, she was going to add a, a second location, and that's kind of in the works. But with everything that's been going on, we need to make sure that the cash flow is there. And yeah. It's her center. Her first center was full with a wait list, I mean, two months ago. And now it, it's still, because um, she's got a, a really, really uh, well-known kind of Montessori curriculum in the area. She's always had that wait list. She sustained the COVID situation pretty well. But awesome. uh, when she had, I mean, this wait list, and now all of a sudden she has room for another 35, 40 enrollments. And I mean, at her tuition levels, that's, I mean, 40 plus thousand dollars a month of, of income that kind of went out the door. So um, we kind of pivoted and just looked at, I mean, what is the message that's going to most resonate now? And it really it's varying. I mean, community by community, state by state, center by center. I mean, we're really having to craft that perfect message because again, there's different laws and rules and regulations and essential, not essential, like all this, this craziness. So we started to find some really great messaging that we're going to start running with today and just getting the phone back to, to ringing to really kind of re-engage with those families pretty quickly uh, we're getting a warm-up campaign back and running, so we're going to continue to kind of re-email everyone. Uh, but the messaging, and I just did a, a podcast this morning uh, on cleanliness, and I was like, it's <laughs> the only, I mean, first time I ever thought that I would be doing a, I mean, an episode or a podcast on 10, 15 minutes about making sure that you're communicating that. And obviously in the past, it, it's been something that would kind of be brought up casually. I mean, we have good cleaning protocols and regimens and it's very sanitary here and parents, I mean, they'd want to hear that, but they would just kind of expect it. But now it's like, they, they want to hear everything that you're doing. And are there other people that are coming in and how often are you sanitizing? They're using steam and like, it's, it's de definitely has uh, changed considerably. Yeah. Uh, but it's just making sure that you've got that, that messaging so that your phone starts to ring again. Awesome. Awesome. That sounds like a, a fantastic uh, week you've been having. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You know, and I want to help our listeners really understand, you know, how they can continue the journey with us, uh, you know, uh, and we're here to serve you. And we also want to, you know, give you some things for free so that if you do want to continue the journey, you can do so. But I also want to help them understand, Michael, when you work with childcare owners and childcare leaders, and I know you get on the phone, you do consultations. The big part of the strategy that you're figuring out is website presence is 
Google ads, different things like that. So maybe you can help clarify for us uh, the strategical approach that you take. Because I know that we're very different where I deal a lot with mindset when it comes to enrollments, it comes with staff, and you make them have these amazing websites and really stand out online. Definitely. No, and, and I appreciate you asking. And we've had a few people that have said, hey, I mean, tell us a little bit more about, I mean, we, we love what you're sharing. Can you help us on a deeper level? So yeah. uh, we're here to support you in any way that we can. So uh, we focus on lead generation, but really uh, revenue generation. So we focus on Facebook ads, Google ads, I mean, all these different sources, but we've designed over the last six, seven, eight years, this really robust program to not only drive I'll use your your word, the dreamy families, drive those families that you really love and, and want to work with, uh, but then to get them on the phone, get them in, in the lead format, but then warm them up through text messages and email automation and voicemails. And really, our, our program is not just generating leads and building you a new beautiful website, but working more hand in hand to make sure that it's actually driving you revenue. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you can't pay your bills with Facebook likes or pay your bills with, I mean, just parents that are raising their hand, we've got to make sure that they're turning into revenue. So that really has been kind of where I've largely focused. It, it, it's been, let's get those leads coming in, but let's make sure that the revenue is starting to grow. And especially now more than ever, like I, I just sent out an email to our list on Monday and I, it was kind of one of those from the heart emails that I said, I really believe the next 90 days are going to be make or break it for a lot of the centers like mm. this is this is go time this is all hands on deck to make sure that everything is in alignment not just their marketing but um, i mean everything that you're teaching around mindset and having your staff and the vision and if you don't have all your ducks in a row it's going to be a rocky road uh, so if they want to uh, i'll give my quick plug and, and then I, i'd love to hear a little bit more about um, kind of how people could get in contact with you. And then let's bring on our, our special guest today, Lee. Lee um, yeah. So localchildcaremarketing.com is um, is our marketing agency. And there's a little button to schedule a call. It's called an enrollment acceleration call. There's absolutely no cost. I mean, it's a brainstorm. Let's get on. Let's talk about your center. Let's see what's working, what's not working, and see if there's a fit. So uh, that is my little uh, plug for everyone this morning to see if it makes sense to going to start a journey and continue a journey. Together. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And if you're inspired to have a conversation with me, I'd also like to make the same offer. You know, feel free to go to childcarebusinesssuccess.com. And through there, you can shoot me. Uh, I think there's a contact us button where you could contact me. And if not, you'll find me on Facebook or just message me here and let me know that you're interested in a free getting unstuck consultation. And the work that I do, it's, it's a lot of vision, it's a lot of mindset, but I find that a lot of people who come to work with me and be part of our community are people who have tried every marketing strategy. They are people who've tried every other strategy out there and they're still not getting results. And what we typically find is that we have to shift the mindset in order to implement and align you with the right strategy. So that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at giving you boatloads of strategy and say, here you go, here's your system, here's your 102 things to try to do. What we wanna do is really meet you where you're at. Look at your situation, look at what you've tried to do and then take it to a whole different level. So if you're tuning into the show and you'd like a free session with me, please visit childcarebusinesssuccess.com. Uh, hit contact us and you'll be connected with me. And otherwise, you can just leave me a comment here, tag me and let me know that you would like to get in touch with me. And me or a member of my team will get you on my calendar. So I'm going to have our little fun scroll thing here. So I'll put my link and then I'll put your link as well. Perfect. So, um, I can do all the, the technicalities. Yeah, I love well. using all these fun <laughs> tools. So um, sorry. So I'm playing around with that. I'm going to bring Lee into the okay. fold and, and allow you to introduce her. I'm really excited. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to go buy a new wardrobe. After, uh, this <laughs> Maybe some old essential gear. Uh, definitely. <laughs> right. I've got to stop wearing the, the pajamas. So uh, let me add Lee and then I'm going to get your little ticker up here. As well. Okay, cool. My little ticker are getting unstuck. Lee Hayward, welcome to Get Connected with Julie Michael. So good to see you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. You are so welcome. So I'll tell everybody a little bit about how I know you, and then you can feel free to jump in and tell us about your book, which is, what's your book called again? Suit Up? Strategically Suited. Strategically Suited. Love that. Although, you know, have you ever tried to say that 20 times fast? 
<laughs> I have not. We can play that game after. Right. We might be able to have a little contest doing that. But Lee and I met through a common mentor that we were both working with. And I was really impressed with her commitment to help people really look good and not to look good as you know others think we should, but to feel good in our own skin and to really look good and feel good so that we're projecting, you know, an amazing image when it comes to how we feel. And I think that's probably where it all starts, right? Lee is just really feeling good in your own skin but also not just about us feeling good but you are a leader and your responsibility is to look at all the people who are working for you and think about how do we make everybody else look good and feel really good in what they're projecting so we're really going to be tackling this from two angles and recently Lee wrote some tips on looking great on zoom and I'm like you know what we have to talk to Lee because this is something that you are going through right now you are doing Zooms, you are doing live videos, hopefully, right, Michael? Hopefully they're doing live videos. Um, you're doing live videos, you're putting yourself out there in bigger ways right now. Some of you are being featured in the media. Some of you are getting approached by media last minute. It's like, oh, what do I got in my closet? And how do I do this? And how do I put myself together? So I thought, what better conversation than to have a talk about image and with what better person than my friend Lee Hayward. So Lee, I'm thrilled that you're here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's so funny. You mentioned the media. I know you guys just talked about this, but it really is a thing uh, for a lot of my clients. We actually practice like having your media outfit in the closet because they are no joke. They're like 30 minutes. We're going to be there. We're, what are you going to look like? And, and it's not just <laughs> you. It's like your entire team, the environment. So how do you make sure all of that is in alignment with what you would really want to be shown on this, you know, awesome free marketing? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, in these days, it's not even that the media is showing up live or that you're going. It's like, hey, let's get on Zoom and can we interview you in 15 minutes? Exactly. So yeah. I think that right there is a fantastic tip is to make sure you've got your media outfit ready. And I think that also puts a little bit of expectation into the universe that you're going to be interviewed soon and get it ready. But what does what does our media interview look like or our, our wardrobe or what we're going to wear on the media? What does it look like? Well, it really depends. I mean, Julie, I love that you start and really hone in on the most important piece, which is people's vision. And so I am, I call myself an image strategist. And essentially I go in and figure out what is going to be the best strategy for the image of your entire business. And that includes you as the founder, that includes, you know, once we're back into a physical space, the physical space, the way clients experience you, and all of these elements sort of come together to create your entire business brand. Um, so whenever you're deciding, even whether it's what to wear on camera, whether it's the uniform you want your staff to wear, whether it's the dress code or dress culture you're putting in the, um, you know, your rules and regulations, it all starts with the vision and sort of what are you trying to create and what are the impact that you want to create? Um, so the question of what do you look like on the media is going to start with what is the vision? You know, 10 years from now, five years from now, who do you want to be seen as? And then you dress for that person. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, I would have, I would have, I mean, I, I've thought about that and, but I, I don't think I ever would have, I guess, thought about it to that level of, I mean, people are um, sitting there and, and just kind of grabbing something together. But the thought of, okay, if I want to have 15, 20 childcare center locations in five or 10 years and, Right now, I'm just I'm in a, an at-home childcare provider that if they really want to start to show up and um, start to, I guess, experience that uh, now rather than then later. No, that's a great tip. It's a great yeah. Tip. And it, it almost becomes a fun game. And I use the word game because it should be fun. I mean, that's what we're doing here. We're playing. We're teaching children to grow into amazing people. Um, and so it's a fun game for yourself to challenge yourself to step up to that person now. Um, and just play with what do you think, who do you think you can be with 15 centers, 20 centers? Um, and then the trap that most people fall into is the second they hear media or they hear we're doing Zoom or we're going to have, you know, headshots taken, whatever it is you're doing. We sort of want to put ourselves in what I call sort of the professional box. And yes, we all need to portray ourselves as a professional in terms of like, we know what we're doing. We are successful. You want to be involved in what we're doing. But you got to make sure that your definition of, of, of professional and success doesn't come from you know, just what you've heard your entire life. It needs to come from the vision where you want to go. Mm. So 
if your, you know, if your child care center is 20 plus locations 10 years from now and everybody wears a specific uniform and has a very specific feel, then you may dress in, um, I mean, I'm literally making this up, but like you may choose to wear a suit with like a fun shirt underneath. You may decide, no, I'm not going to be that person. I'm going to be super fun and I'm going to be wearing a whimsical printed t-shirt. Um, <laughs> and that's the real key is really figuring out what is right for you and your business because it's not this sort of blanket um, wardrobe for everyone. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of the pushback that we get from the industry too is that, well, we're in child care. You know, we are going to go in and we are going to get dirty. And you know, what's the point of putting something on really nice at the start of the day if we're just going to get to be a crazy mess and probably stink a little? <laughs> so, well, and that's a really uh, honestly, no matter what business it is, it's always challenging to create the right dress culture, the right dress code, whatever you want to call it, that your team can really get engaged with. Um, you know, when I started my business, what I was doing was going into people's closets, going into their homes and helping them sort of get rid of stuff they didn't want and make better outfits and yada, yada, yada. And the thing that kept coming up that I found so interesting that is always good to know as a leader is we would get to people's sort of like work section of their closet and they'd be like, oh, that's just work. Like, let's not waste our time with that. Like, <laughs> I don't want to pay you to talk about work. And I was always like, whoa, whoa. I mean, you spend a lot of time here. Let's really look at this and consider it. But you have to realize that sometimes that's where people are coming from. And um, to your point, Julie, about vision is when you can really get people engaged in what you're trying to do and the impact that you're trying to make, it's a lot easier to get them excited to wear you know, whatever it is, you know, a khaki, take Target, khaki pants and, you know, a red t-shirt. Actually, I was in Target last week picking something up and there was a woman there and she had on um, khaki pants and a red leopard print t-shirt. And I was like, wow, way to work out the Target um, <laughs> dress code and make it your own. Like she was so cute. And she was like, yeah, I'm not wearing a red plain t-shirt. Um, you know, and that worked for her, but that's just an example of like how you can take something and kind of make it your own. Yeah. And I think that's really important just to look at, well, what is your own style? And right now we're seeing a lot of people's styles on TV and I'm not a huge TV watcher, but if you catch the late night shows and Michael, maybe you've caught in a few, but even Jimmy Fallon or whoever it might be where they're normally on a suit or in a suit on air. Now it's like they're in their jogging clothes or, you know, so their image is changing and you're just kind of seeing who they are in their home. I mean, do you feel that that's the right strategy, the right, right way to go? To me, I feel like it's me getting to know them better, you know, like, oh, they're just, they're just being themselves. And I think it's pretty cool. What, yeah. what are your thoughts? Well, and I don't think we can pretend. I mean, like we're all at home, <laughs> like we're all in this boat, hanging out together, figuring it right. out day by day. Um, Jimmy Fallon's a great example. Like if you have watched any of his show, his house is the most fascinating thing you've ever seen it's so eclectic like I would have never like the man in the like you know dapper suit I would have never <laughs> said like wow you weird you live in the strangest house ever they have a slide like it's so playful it's so fun um I mean so if you think about it, it kind of makes sense but that's what's kind of cool about it is that you can sort of start to show people the sides of you however you do have to be strategic about it um I have seen a lot of crazy stuff on zoom laundry i mean <laughs> i know you know <laughs> like the underwear back there you know right <laughs> so. i mean to michael's point about cleanliness if you you know just spent a whole time you know talking about cleanliness and it's something that you're teaching your staff that is super important and then they get on a staff meeting with you and it's not cleanly in the back you've completely negated that point of your leadership. And so it's really important to make sure that the things that are important to you and your business, whether you are at home running it or, you know, in the center itself, that they're still aligned with what you really believe. So if you were, uh, another great point. Um, so I guess if you were looking at where, where would they start or where could they start? So um, putting yourself in the shoes of a childcare owner, for example, um, I love that you have a holistic view of, of of image, so it's not just the clothes that they're wearing by any means, but I'm sure it's I mean how they carry themselves and the image that that's at their center. 
if they were doing maybe, I, I love to use the word audit, but if they were going to kind of do an image audit, for example, would you suggest they focus on themselves first? Should they focus on what's going on at their center and their staff? Or what, what are your thoughts there? That's a great question, Michael. And it's actually a really, really important one because you will not get any results if you don't start at the right place. So the most important place to start is with yourself. And you have to take kind of a little bit of an internal, a little time with yourself to figure out who you want to be as a leader. And then you have to go do that so that other people can watch you be that leader. So if the dress culture that you want to create is a certain way, then you need to show up at that, if not better. Always. Whether you are going into the center, whether you're on Zoom for a like, you know, impromptu meeting. Um, so that you are just practicing what you preach. Yeah. And once you get good at practicing what you preach, then you start to pull threads of the vision and the why behind what you do. And you really start to indoctrinate it into the team so that they're equally as excited about the impact that they're helping you make. Because you can't do it without them. They're, they're such an important piece. Um, and then you start to filtrate it into the team. There's actually, I pulled this while y'all were talking. There's a great book and anybody who knows me is going to be like, please stop talking about this again. But um, okay. It's called the culture code. Yeah. All right. So there's three questions from the culture code. So everybody's adding lists of things to do. Like, don't put this book on your list of things to do. Take these three questions and do something with these questions and read the book later. But the most important part of the book, when you are talking about kind of doing an image audit is that they ask three questions. One is, are we connected? So are you and your team and your families, are you all connected? And that means are you connected with the mission and what you're trying to do? And do we share a future? That's what your team wants to know. And that's what everybody is really questioning right now. So it's really a day by day um, challenge as a leader to and for families really to be like, yes, we share a future and here's why. And then the third one is, are we safe here? And that has a lot of different connotations in this particular industry, but that's what your team wants to know. And that includes watching you as a leader. So you, to long story short, to answer Michael's question, you have to start with you. And then it trickles down into everything else. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I think, you know, and I, I don't think it has to be so hard. So if you have uniforms, and I'm sure Lee can help me with this, but if you have uniforms, you know, you just bump it up a notch to where they're wearing their uniforms and sneakers or whatever. And maybe you're wearing a nicer pair of dress shoes or you've got a little sparkle on, a sparkly pin, a sparkly scarf, mm -hmm. or maybe you've got a logo jacket that you have especially printed for you that you wear. So it could just be that you take it up a few notches, but you're still in uniform, but it's just that you do still stand out as being different. And the key is the mindset behind it. And the mindset is not that you're trying to like be like, I'm a sparkly princess and I'm better than everyone else. Like that's not. Oh, really in this true. industry though, it might be a sparkly princess. I'm just, <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. I'm just saying. <laughs> but the idea really is that you're bringing people with you to this awesome place and this great impact that you're ready to make. And so in order to do that, you have to inspire other people. Um, so back to my kind of work in people's closets, I would always ask people, all right, well, what is your boss wearing? Let's start with that. And they were horrific answers. Like, um, he wears sneakers, she wears capri pants, like horrific answers in various industries. Like that particular one was in an industry where this girl was wearing like um, power dresses and her boss was wearing sneakers and capri pants. Um, so, so that was definitely up, wanting, wanting up your butt boss. What do they say? Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> I think the girl was looking for a leader to lead her and you can't be led by somebody who's not actually making an effort. Yeah, that's very true. So where do you start if you feel like you're just, you know, I'm gonna, I'll take it to a, a whole different level than Michael, <laughs> kind of on the same note. But what if you just feel like you're a hot mess? I mean, you look at your <laughs> clothes, they're all stained. You don't put anything on without it getting stained. You feel like you're everything just, you know, it's just I, I don't even know where to start. You know, where do you recommend people starting? Is it getting to know what colors look good on them? Is it, you know, makeup, go, go getting a makeover? I mean, not for our guys, but for our women, you know. Well, where you just feel like, man, you know, I just take whatever and throw it on and this is what I got. So, I mean, and, and it's a little challenging right now to just take everything and throw it out because you might literally be running around naked and maybe that's okay because we're all at home, but eventually you're going to have to get on camera. No. So, 
maybe we won't do that today. But the the real thing to ask yourself is to just sit down and be really honest with yourself and come from the perspective that none of us have any kind of education in terms of what we should wear. It came from your mom saying you can't wear that or your parents being like, this is what we wear to church. This is what we wear to this place. This is what we wear here. Or a friend saying, oh, or you see something in a magazine. Like literally there is no A, B, C, this is how you do it. Um, it you know, unless you've worked with somebody who has told you that, who's sort of an expert in this. So just realize that and be okay with it and ask yourself, a question of how do I want to feel? And it's a great exercise to just brainstorm, just just vomit num vomit adjectives <laughs> of like, I want to feel powerful, I want to feel confident, I want to feel whatever they are. All the things, get as many words out as you can, and then try and, and get it down to the three most important words. And those become your guide. So let's say that you end up with, um, you know, I'm feeling like Michael's words would probably be like powerful, confident, and sexy. What do you think, Julie? Sure. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> powerful, confident, and sexy. Those could go on your uh, website there, Michael. I, like I mean, <laughs> anyway, I digress. But anyway, whatever the whatever the words are, you start to then put things on from your closet and ask yourself simply, does it make me feel confident, powerful, and badass, confident, whatever it is, whatever your words are, and they're yours, so they can be anything. Um, and if the answer is no, then it needs to either go in a pile to go away, or if you need to wear it because you can't go outside naked or you can't get on screen naked, then it goes into a section of your closet of like, this is something I really want to replace. And it starts to show you what you actually have to wear that you like and what you don't. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a place to start from in terms of like, wow, I have zero pants that I actually feel good in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's true. I think that's a great tip. So identify those words and then see if the things that you have help you feel the image that you want to project or how you want to feel when you get ready for yeah, the that's day. That's a great, great question. I mean, how do I want to feel? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think that's so important, especially when you're hopping on enrollment building calls or giving tours or whatever it might be, you know, identify those three words. How do you want to feel? And I think most of our folks would probably want to feel powerful and, and confident at least. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, and, and and again, it's kind of like what I said about the um, sort of the professional box. Like they're your words. They could be silly, fun. I mean, they can be literally anything. And you just have to be honest with yourself. And kind of a trick that I share with a lot of my clients is take two post-it notes, put one in your closet and one in your wallet. So eventually when we're going out and going shopping again, you're standing somewhere, or even if you're having stuff sent in online, you look at this post-it note and it reminds you, these are the parameters of what I stay in. And typically people's parameters are like, it's arrived. It fits. I hope you're big. <laughs> Right. That's not good enough. So you're, there. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to start thinking about your outer presence just as you would your website, a business card. If a designer handed you a business card and you were like, I don't like this, you wouldn't be like, thank you. Let me give you my money and I'm going to go on my way. Right. Same with the website. Like you're going to scrutinize it. You're going to change the tiniest things. And when you start to sort of use yourself as a marketing tool as both a leader and a sales tool, then it becomes a little bit more fun to try and figure out, okay, how do I get dressed in a way that's going to help me, you know, do what I want to do. Yeah. And I do feel that we have a lot of leaders who are hiding, you know, not really putting themselves out there. And I'm sure part of it is because they don't feel the way they want to feel in front of media or on, you know, on live uh, video. Uh, how important is it right now? Uh, to worry so much about how you look. Is it more important just to come on camera, be yourself, or is it more important to make sure you've got the image in check and then come on camera? Or is it a blending of both maybe? I don't know. It's a blending of both. It's kind of like my nine-year-old daughter is like, why are you putting on makeup? I'm like, because it's fun. I like makeup. <laughs> But I have to teach her that like, I can go outside without makeup on, it will be fine. Like it doesn't, I don't use it as a crutch. I use it as a way to enhance and kind of have fun with something. So um, every, there's a great book um, called Showmanship Sells and it's out of print. And one of my favorite quotes from that is um, opportunities are everywhere. And I, that is in my book too. And they are like, so why would you 
waste an opportunity by just getting on in a way that maybe doesn't help you feel your best self and project your best self. Because, you know, I, I think it's a little bit of baloney to say like, I feel great when I'm wearing my sweatshirt, I just pulled out of the laundry and I'm not sure if it has cat hair on it. Like, you know, like right. you feel better when you've actually sort of made an effort. And I'm not saying we have to like pretend to be perfect. That's not what it's about, but you really have to be honest with yourself of like, how do I feel my best and show up like that? Mm, it's very important. Uh, I love it. What do you recommend? You know, a lot of times it comes up that there's difficult conversations that we have to have. And maybe we see team members who aren't necessarily dressing or projecting the image we want them to, or maybe it's even less than desirable. And sometimes we have teachers and they don't have a big budget, but how do we have a difficult conversation with somebody that they're not projecting the image or that they really need to have better hygiene, look better, whatever it might be. How, what do you recommend to, to leaders in terms of having those conversations and how to approach people who they don't think look that good? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, and it is a big part of um, it's a hard one. It's the really business hard. of what I do is a lot of people bring me in to sort of have those conversations democratically. <laughs> have those conversations. And you do have to be careful. Um, you, you do have to be very careful. But so this is, you know, as business owners, as leaders, everybody's always talking about here. Here are the the foundational things you need to be putting into place as your business. And we all get busy, and we're just trying to run the business and make money, but when the foundational pieces of like your core values and your vision are in place and the people are indoctrined with that, they know what they're doing. It's a lot easier to have a conversation with somebody that's like, look, you know how we really tell people that we care, not just like it's some baloney written on the wall. We genuinely care. We have to do that for ourselves as well. So like you have a basis to start the conversation from that's not just like, you don't care about yourself. You look terrible. Like that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, so for starters, really building the foundation is super important and it gives you a leg to stand on. And then, you know, if you don't already have that into place, it's an opportunity start to start to talk about that. Um, but it, but it's not easy, but I think a lot of times when you can do it with sort of love and straightforwardness and, the biggest thing is giving people examples. You cannot assume that your team knows what business casual means, or even if even if it's literally a polo shirt and khaki, you have to spell out what you want from it, which means it's ironed, it's your hair is dry. You have to be so, so specific. Yes. Um, and it's not, it. you just can't assume, like you don't know what people have been sort of taught and what their values have been in terms of presentation. So you have to sort of help show them what your values are and that that's what you expect. Would you put that in the handbook? Would you, I mean, how, how yeah. would you make sure that that's effectively communicated? So when I write dress codes for businesses, we go through, we start with the values and then we create a dress code from there. And that helps tell us like, what should it be? Should it be a uniform? Should it be a dress culture and not called a code? Like there's all these things that go into it, but then you just drill it down to, um, this is how short shorts should be. This is how like very specific. And um, you have to be careful with pictures, but I have found that you can also build Pinterest boards that are very helpful for people. I encourage you to um, have a lawyer look at it before you just send it out. But the, the key is creating a lot of diversity in the pictures, but the pictures are so helpful for people to understand what the heck it is that you're talking about. Because my version of, you know, I'm just going to say business casual as an example, business casual and somebody else's version of business casual, adding in the fact that you're getting dirty, you've got kids wiping stuff on you. Yes. Um, it, it, you're running the gamut of what people think you actually mean. That's so yeah, and I think that's really important. And this is an incredibly visual group. I'm sure you found that, Michael, too. It's like I, they're very visual. So I agree. I think take your handbooks and put pictures in it. And really, you could even make it a team building activity where people identify the pictures that are appropriate for work attire and the pictures that are not. And you could have two different categories. And this is what some of what we've done in organizations and childcare is just really have those two categories of pictures where we're looking at like, oh, OK, this is appropriate. OK, not so appropriate. But pictures, I, I agree with you, Lee, I think are incredibly powerful. 
And if you go back to the culture code book and those three questions, are we connected? Do we have a future here together? Am I safe here? And you really think about it from that perspective. I think leaders typically, you're driving a vision, you're driving a vision, you're driving a number, you're trying to get somewhere, but you have to remember that your team is driving a mission too. And it's not always the same. And so when you can really bring them in and come from that perspective, it's also easier to have that conversation. Mm, love it. I think that's incredibly valuable. Oh, this, is, this has been a lot of great, great tips so far. I'm getting a lot of good Facebook comments as well. Um, would, would love to I throw a little bit of a different question, but any suggestions or, or tips on when you're, so you mentioned, obviously you want to make sure that when you're kind of doing that image audit, that obviously you're focusing on yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest um, some of the owners of the, the centers do to kind of audit their physical space, for example, and the signage and the colors and I mean, how would you, how would you approach that? And oh, is there yeah. any year the that you- The sign's got to match your wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love well, the question. It's true. I mean, because what you're looking for is total alignment in the entire business image. And a lot of times what's happening with businesses, and it's so easy because you're trying to get this piece done and then you're like, check, I did it. And then you're trying to get this piece done and then you end up building a puzzle that doesn't actually fit together. So you go back to Julie's mantra, and I know I keep saying this, but you go back to the vision. What the heck are we actually doing? And let's, I mean, let's, let's say, let's make this up. Maybe the vision is I want 20 centers and yes, they're going to be amazing centers, but the goal is for me to have X amount of money in my pocket. It's hard to build signage that says I have X money in my pocket. Like that won't, that won't um, translate for people. But when you have the 20 centers and you have the financial results that your goal is, it's going to give you a certain feeling. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's freedom. Maybe it's fun. Maybe it's playfulness. And those are the key words that you start to bring in into that audit of like, okay, when you walk into this, does every everything, the way the receptionist answers the phone, the way people walk in, the way it smells, um, does it all feel fun and playful and whatever the words are? Yes. Does that make sense? I know that's a little abstract. Huh, it, it does. The, the only, um, I guess, I wouldn't say point of clarification, but the only other thing that I was thinking, what if their checkbook or their credit cards don't match kind of the, the vision that they have right now? So, I mean, would you suggest they, I mean, hold off on putting something out that might be, I guess, substandard for like, like if they're saying, and they're envisioning 20 centers, for example, and they're high-end centers and fancy entrances and brick and stone and things like that, but they're trying to bootstrap their first center, how would they, uh, would they kind of gradually do it as they start to grow or would they portray the vision of this is where we're starting and where we want to go? What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, Michael. And it kind of goes back a little bit to us talking about you know, having the outfit for the media. I mean, maybe when you have 20 centers, you want to wear a specific designer, but you're not going to buy that right now. But you can pull the elements out of that. So like, let's take our brick and our fancy entrance, whatever it is. If that feels clean and sophisticated and welcoming, you can still do those things really on, you know, on a much lower budget. It's just that's where your mind has to be at it. Not like, oh, this is only I can do. I'm going to make this as clean and sophisticated and welcoming as I can right now. Mm. Got it. No, I like that. Great, great point of clarification. Yeah. And I think also doing, and I don't know if you've had any of your clients do this, Lee, but it also like a vision board, you know, keep in mind everything that you want. And when you start getting desires, you know, trickling in like, oh, I'd love this and I'd love this and I'd love us to have matching earrings with our, you know, whatever it might be, you know, create a vision board where you can look at that. And the more you look at that and really engage your active imagination with what you want to bring to life, the quicker all that's going to start manifesting for you. So I really encourage you to let the what's going on in your head, the thoughts manifest onto a piece of paper. And before you know it, that piece of paper is going to manifest into what you're looking at in terms of your reality. Yeah, it's so true. Well, and from my personal experience, I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old and both were in amazing preschools. I mean, we were so blessed to have the schools that we went to. Um, and I, it was interesting because my husband's an engineer and I'm me and I buy from my gut and he weighs the pros and cons and makes lists. 
So, you know, it's an interesting industry to, to be creating an environment for, because you're kind of, you have to create that feeling and then you have to kind of create the feeling that also works for the list people. So when you can start to have this alignment throughout, where when you walk in, it feels a way. When you walk into the classroom, the team is dressed a certain way. When you meet the founder, they're dressed a certain way. You start checking the box for all of these people, the gut people like me and the engineer people like my husband. And it's the alignment that gives the brand the positioning and power. And you don't realize it, but we are all sort of romanced by positioning with businesses every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, you know, how do you want to be seen? And you starting to look at that puzzle piece as like, okay, the puzzle eventually has to go together, even if I can only work on the corner piece right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really important. Where do you suggest and do you have any secret places that you like to shop? So if you're on a lower budget, um, you know, for clothing, we'll start there. It, is there a secret place that you have that you tell all your clients, you know, go and check out this site. This is really <laughs> awesome. This is where you could grab a lot of, of pieces that are going to look fantastic. That's a good question. I mean, there, sh this shopping in my head is ridiculous the amount of websites and things that I know but I, I think the best answer to that question is be just so sure that you can find the feeling that you want in the price range that you want you could do um, like thread up is a great consignment online consignment place um, you know target like all of these places you may have to put a little bit of work into it, but once you've put the work into it, it's done. You've eliminated the 30 minutes it takes you to get dressed each morning because you've already spent sort of time on the ground once we can have time on the ground. Um, you know, finding the stuff that you love. And I think one of the one of the most important, this is veering off from your question, but it is an important point, is one of the most important keys, man, woman, any, whatever, like, make sure that every single thing in your closet, this goes for environment and your, in your space too, that you love it. Not just like this will work. <laughs> you, should, you should love it. I have lots of this will work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. I got some right. organizing. To do today, then. Well, work. and, and this will work. Doesn't build what you're trying to do. This will work. Doesn't make an impact. I love it. Gives you joy. It gives you freedom. It gives you excitement. It gives you playfulness and people feel that. And I know that we can't all run out and just go get every, I love it. But when you start to, you know, come from that perspective, the paper that you have on your business card, you love it. Your website, you love it. All the things you yeah. start to create a completely different business image than you had before, because what you are doing is important and you love it. Ooh, I love it. That's really good. You know, and, and if you do like shopping and when the world opens back up, I think thrift stores, are a great place to go and find those playful pieces that you can't find anywhere else. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, it really, you can find stuff everywhere. There's, I mean, one of my personal favorites, like just if I'm bored and people are looking for me, <laughs> if it's a safe bet to find me at like TJ Maxx. Cause I'm like, oh, you just never know what you're gonna find. It's the hunt that's fine, that's fun for me. <laughs> and other people are like, God, that sounds like the worst thing ever, but it's just fun. Um, so I, I mean, the real key is just like having the, the knowledge that like what you want exists. You may have to look for it, but don't settle. Mm, very powerful. Yeah, and um, when it comes to um, camera, getting the camera out, what are like your top three things that you must do or think to yourself or prepare yourself? Um, to get there. And, you know, and also, you know, we think about so many different things and there's so many people who don't even think about the lighting when they go on to an interview. And I've interviewed people where it's like they're a dark shadow hidden somewhere, you know, and it's like, come on out and come play. And it, so what do you recommend to people in terms of just getting like a basic light for your camera, making yourself look good, um, regardless of what you're wearing? So what are some of your tips for, you know, getting that camera out or being on a Zoom call or and having the right lighting and having the right image that you want to project. Yeah, I mean, and you're seeing right now with, you know, Zoom being the thing, you're seeing like all these things coming out. There's lights that attach to your cell phones. There's like lights that you can attach to all these different places. And you can go buy that, but you can also just go downstairs, get a lamp 
and put it sort of in front of you and then mm -hmm. play with it. Get on your camera before you get on a big meeting, before you lead your team to say, you know what, guys, we are making it through this. We are sales are coming in, yada, yada. Um, open up your uh, open up your laptop and play with the camera and see what you're actually going to look like. If you need more light, go get another lamp. Um, so it doesn't have to be this like, you know, scientific, we're all new videographers because we're not. Um, and then one of the most interesting things is just sort of testing the clothing that you're wearing. One of the biggest, the easiest things to do is put something on and take a little selfie in the mirror and you can tell how it translates on camera. Um, I, I learned this very quickly from a photo shoot when I had this necklace that had like a coral pieces of coral and it looked like I had like weird fingers coming out of my neck. Like, <laughs> it's just like the tiniest little thing that you can be like, okay, no, that's a no. We're going to, we're going sw to switch that out. You know? Yes. It's just kind of taking the time to prepare. Um, and then once you kind of have that set up, then it's a lot easier. I know I mentioned on that article that you read, Julie, that right now, like I'm not in my office right now, I'm sitting in my bedroom in a chair because my daughter's in my office and my son is doing school. You know, like we're all just making it work. <laughs> um, but, and sometimes you have to do that, but in advance, before you sit down on camera, test it out, see what it looks like, test the lighting and it changes throughout the day. Yes. And I do think hands down, ladies, you have to wear makeup on camera. Even if you've never done it, start watching videos. Like you will thank me later. It's it it makes a massive difference. Yep, I think even just a little bit, <laughs> yeah. a little bit helps. Yeah, you know, and, and it's interesting with camera too because I'm even looking at the three of us and I'm like, okay, Lee, your color looks very natural, and I look more white, and then Michael looks more white. So I'm always trying to find like on camera what's the the lighting that will help you have like a healthy healthy complexion. So you have any tips? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't know that I like, I'm definitely not sort of a lighting video expert, but I played with it enough to be like, Oh God, no, don't do that. Or like, <laughs> I know that if I sit at a certain space in my house at nine o'clock in the morning, I can't sit there at four o'clock in the morning based on the windows coming in. Um, but I'm, I'm a little ahead of the game because I've always worked from home. And so I've been zooming forever since before it was cool. Um, <laughs> but that's it. Like, there's no real secret other than just go test it out. Like, just see go. where see where you like. You know, and you'll find too on different platforms. I think you'll you'll look different ways too. Sure, like when yeah. I'm on Zoom, I'm like, oh, it looks different than when I go straight to Facebook Live versus you know different platforms. So yeah, I mean, so I think the real key is like really consider the background that you have and stage it. Bring whatever you need to from wherever. Bring some lights, put them in the front of you. Um, they don't need to be fancy lights. I mean, they can be, they're great. They're much easier to use, but like you don't need all that because hopefully we're not gonna have to do this forever. Um, and then really get dressed, like all the way, top and bottom. None of this business with shorts on the bottom, workout pants on the bottom. Actually get <laughs> dressed in a way that you feel like the leader that you're trying to be and the leader that has the 20 centers 10 years from now that when you look back you're like wow i am i can't believe we did this yeah that's amazing yeah and that's true right now a lot of people are like okay you know shirt up or from the waist up gotta look good and then i think it was christopher reeves son who was on camera and they kind of i think they got below his waist and found out he was just wearing a pair of shorts <laughs> He was yeah. doing some kind of media interview or interviewing somebody else. And he's like, oh, didn't know you catch my legs on that one. <laughs> but I had a suit jacket on. So this has been absolutely fantastic. I so appreciate you coming on and sharing all this uh, information with us. Michael, did we want to give some uh, some strategies to take away with? or some? Yeah, well, let's do our, our one action item. And then I know Lee, you've got a, a great quote. So we're going to let you lead or let you read um, your oh, quote yeah. at the end. So we always love to end with a quote. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put your link back up here to grab your digital copy of your book, completely free of charge. So let yes, me. Yes, please hold that up. Can you hold that up? Yeah. That so this up. is the book. Strategically suited. Love it. So you can. All right. Let me there add that to the bottom. So it's a little Bitly link there. So I'll let that stream there for a minute. Awesome. Um, I think my my biggest takeaway from this was to really focus on how something makes me feel. Um, I haven't really thought of that. I, I just buy things personally and, and even I'm just clothing, but just everything around me, do I think it looks good? 
does that do i like that black too does that shirt look fancy but it, i really haven't thought through again not just clothing but other things in my office i mean how does it make you feel so i like that a lot and i guess i'll do a second one of dress not even i, I know we keep saying dressing because it was a lot about how to dress but um, that goes all, all throughout your life but thinking about where you want to be in, in five years ten years and dressing for that now um, so that it starts to internalize and um, kind of start to to exude that that particular style, so to speak. And and I love the important point of you know I think it's head to toe in terms of how you dress. And I often tell people when I go on Zoom, I'm wearing my sparkly shoes. I'm not right now, but you know I'm wearing my sparkly shoes. You can't see my shoes, but it's the way that they make me feel. And I think that is such a critically important point. And I have to remember that more too, especially doing so many more lives and so many more interviews and all that kind of thing is to make sure I'm putting on my sparkly shoes. And I remember meeting somebody once at the National Speakers Association and she did something pretty interesting is that she always wore like this scarf and on the back of her scarf so on her backside she would wear some kind of sparkly pin and she did this every single time and it made her stand out she's like well everybody knows i'm the lady with the pin on her back you know so she always did this but she just loved her scarf and loved the pin that she put on her back so uh, another big takeaway is to make sure that the clothes make you feel fun and playful if those are important words to you and it could be sparkly and playful but just to make sure that, you, that you're loving what you're wearing. So I love that point. So thank you, Lee, for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think I actually said this word, but the whole point of the feeling and what makes it different from like just seeing something somewhere and putting it on is that it makes it authentic to you because mm -hmm. they're your words. Yeah, that's so important. It's so important. Yeah, because a lot of times we'll look at ourselves in somebody else's eyes and say, oh, well, what are they thinking? And do they like me? Well, it's not so much do they like me, it's about do you like you? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So, I know you've got a, a really great quote to end with. So again, thank you ever so much for joining us. Make sure you guys tune back in on Tuesday, nine o'clock central, 10 o'clock Eastern. And again, thank you ever so much Lee for coming on and giving us some great tips today. So we'll let you end this episode with your quote. Okay, perfect. All right. So one of my all time favorite business books that um, I know Julie, you and I had a conversation of like, what, you know, what's a book that's really impacted you? in a quote and it comes from Steve Jobs and um, mm -hmm. it, he writes about this in a book and he says, when you're a carpenter making a beautiful chest of drawers, you're not going to use a piece of plywood on the back, even though it faces the wall and nobody will see it. You'll know it's there. So you're going to use a beautiful piece of wood on the back for you to sleep well at night. The aesthetic, the quality has to be carried all the way through. Oh, wow. Whew, I just got chills. That was awesome. Love yeah. It. Yeah, very powerful quote. So it just talks about being authentic in and out, front and back, all around with who you are and making sure that you're projecting those words that you really want to feel. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, anything else you have to say, Michael? I'm we complete ready? Over, here. over here. All right, awesome. And remember, Lee, go ahead and hold up your book. Go grab Lee's book. Uh, and we have, we have a digital download, you said, right? We're posting a link for that. Okay. Yeah, and then make sure you visit my co-host, Michael Tasner at his website, which is localchildcaremarketing.com. And you can find me at childcarebusinesssuccess.com. Can't wait for our next show. And Lee, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, guys. This was really fun. Talk to you all soon. Bye, everyone. See you on Tuesday. Bye.